Well, let's see, uh, let's start painting here. Oven on the front looks pretty good. Uh, maybe you should have a trash compactor here, obviously. Maybe uh, need the counter. I think these are the burners. Yeah, that looks not bad. And let's do, should we have a sink here? Granite. I know that doesn't look so good. Let's do this. Yeah, that looks better. And now we need a chopping board. I don't have a really nice one, Sam. Something like this, maybe? Ah, that looks a little bit weird, but uh, let's uh, put in... Uh, that looks not too bad. We can Let's see, we can probably have something like this. This looks pretty nice, doesn't it? It's all nice storage boxes, but we painted them differently. And uh, Okay, on this side, fine, fine. What can we do on this side? Concrete white? That's all right. It's not perfect, but it looks all right. Let's say something like this, right? Doesn't this look much better than just like, well... Let's say we have something like this, right? Which one looks better? Which one do you prefer in your base? To me, this is where the strength of painting comes in because in the previous versions of uh, Seven Days to Die, such as Alpha 15 and earlier, everything looked like this. Actually, I don't even think you had the storage boxes, but anyway, you had all the blocks, you had the concrete, you had the cobblestone, flagstone, but you couldn't make it look different than the material. The texture was what the material was, and that was it. So you couldn't have something nice like this in your base. You couldn't just paint it and make it look much nicer and homelier. And it goes for a lot of other things. Let's say I want to have a... Let's see, let's say I want to have a fake pill case. I could put that on the up here, just sort of to show that I have a lot of pills. Maybe I want to have a sign saying, hey, cold beer. Oh, that's actually the cold beer sign, something like this. And then I want to say, hey, this is my supply. Right, come here for all the food supply and everything. And you couldn't do that previously. If you had this as concrete, then that's what you had. Maybe here you want to do something like this. Some of these ones and... Uh, pill case side, no, 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 let's find, let's do this one. Is this look like, that's ah, alright, a little bit shiny, but it works. Oh, no, wrong side thing. Back and do this one. This just looks so much better than just plain boxes, and that's something that is really nice about painting. Painting is, is something that I enjoy, and I think it makes bases look a lot nicer. Imagine that base, if it was just plain concrete. You could, but I like some color. Now, it's really simple to do, and when you start off doing painting, the f there's two things you need. Obviously, you need the paintbrush, simple, some wooden leather, just craft one, simple enough. You also need paint. Now, paint you need to craft in the chemistry station. It is fairly simple, though. You mix it up, one chrysanthemum, one oil, and it will give you a hundred each. And this is the my amount that I have. Let's turn this off. Let's just get this like that. So I have another hundred in there. Ah, let's toss this. Don't want to have too much. Now painting is real simple. So you hold the paintbrush and you hold R. And you get the full selection. If you just, just tick R, click R, you get the texture chooser. And you can go left and right to choose them. I use the mouse button, uh, mouse roller to select. It also works. You can, I don't know what that one means. It's like... If you want to search for it, yeah, I guess that's it. It'll tell you which group it is, not so important. The paint cost is a little bit important. Some of them cost more, most of them cost one. There are some that cost more, like the metal one. I think the um, tar, there's a tar one that cost more as well. But in general, they just cost one. Some of them are just priced at three for some really weird reason, but let's assume we are just working with one. So we go back to holding R, and this way you want to do the material, you'll do this one. You also can choose whether to do the paintbrush or the paint roll. And the difference is, let's say I choose to, let's say we want to make this flooring just look like concrete. Should we do that? Hmm. Now let's do, let's say we want to have a rug. Now I have the normal selection of the paint roller. You get three or four, three times four, depending on how you click it. If you click sort of on the side of one, you can actually get four by three. But you see it does a huge area comparably. If I select the normal paintbrush, it'll just do one. And it's the same thing. If you left click, you'll remove one versus if you have the selection of the paint roller, you'll remove an area. So keep that in mind when you're painting, choose the correct one. Usually for large areas, I just use the paint roller and then I sort of fine tune using the paintbrush. Simple, that's the main selection. We also have picture texture. Let's say I wanna do, I wanna have this texture, hold R while looking at it, 
texture picker and you'll see down here this one changed as well and we'll get this one and i say no i don't want this i want to do this again our texture picker and you'll see it selects the different texture down here so you can see and then i just paint it over so that's pretty simple these are the basic way of how to actually use the paint in the survival mode and there's actually creative mode as well that we're going to get to as well so the way I like to use it myself in the survival is that I will do painting and I will basically paint in, if I'm doing medical stuff, I will paint. It's not what I wanted. Let's uh, I, let's clear that. Let's do that. And let's go here. I will basically just paint one of them and say, hey, this is where I have my medical stuff. Then I'll take another one for, let's say, my building material. Simple enough to see. Now you also have now obviously now the writable storage box so you can actually write something in there and which also works. However, this one is not paintable yet. I hope they will make it paintable. That would be pretty nice. But this works pretty good for just standard stuff because it's really visible even from a distance. And if you want to hide these ones, you can do that as well. Let's say you have a wall that looks like this. You can hide it and make it just blend in really well. And that's basically what I did here. These are basic storage boxes, but I made them look like an oven with a burner and a trash compactor. And that looks a little bit nicer than just having just a plain old wood. Other ways to use it is actually to combine it with some of these ones. And what are these? These are, and let me see if I can flip it. Come on, flip, 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 flip like this. This is one, this is another one. And there we have a, third one let's flip this one as well something like this oh like this these are the everything is breaking all oh, these are the loose floorboards so you can actually craft let's do loose you can craft this one requires some nails and wood and everything but when you walk out and everything you can't tell what they are until your friends actually fall down and then they fall into the spikes and everything and then maybe they die so they're really good in uh, pvp or if you're just trolling your friends e either way because you can paint the floor to just look really normal so all these ones are loose floorboards of different types and you'll see they will be disintegrating and your friends will all your enemies will be falling down into your spike pit below really good way of uh, killing them trolling them and just having a little bit of fun now if they are quick enough and they move out of the way they won't actually fall down so you can avoid it uh, because there is a little bit of a moment where you hear that creaking sound but it's pretty fun to do anyway and why not when you're playing with your friends i mean you do have to have some pranks one more thing that you might run into in survival is that when you're building you might have a difference between how the ground looks like here and let's say i paint this uh, what can I paint? Let's say I paint it as uh, some gravel or something. So I've painted this gravel because, of course, I have my base. And then I realized that I can't, you, know, you get this stupid, annoying uh, uh, separation here because of how the soil and the sand and the gravel and everything works. And, of course, how a block looks. So you can actually sort of bypass that by using iron sheets because they're really, really thin. And you can put, do it like this. So I put the iron sheet over here. And then I can paint the iron sheet. And that will look a lot better compared. Because it will mix in a lot better with the regular blocks. And if we had some gravel. Let's say I had some gravel block. And it wasn't just sand. Unfortunately it does, doesn't look to be any sand texture. But something like this. It will definitely mix in better than if it was just uh, you have that very annoying like this. Which one looks better? And you can't accomplish this very easily unless you have these sheets and everything. You can sort of try to mix it. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better than this. So that's one way to actually use the painting as well. Just to make it look a little bit better in your base where the base meets the wilderness. But now on to some creative use. So let's say you're doing a creative build or maybe you're just testing something out. You're testing out your base or you're making a prefab or something or just you're building a nice big city or something or something cool that uh, requires creative use. Now it does have a few extra functionality that is really useful and I use it all the time when I make my videos. So we are now in creative mode and when I hold R you'll see some additional things friend you'll see the spray gun so let me select that one and i spray you'll see whoa it covers a huge area 
and that makes it a lot easier than just even using the the normal paint roller this one will allow you to paint much larger areas so this is really useful you also have paint all sides and let me show you what that is so let me do and uh, let me go back to just having one and i'm going to select a different texture let's do this one for now when i normally paint it's one side what you also can do and this is really good when you're building something big you can actually hold r and you do paint all sides so if you just paint one of them you'll see all sides become the same and this is really really helpful let's say you're making concrete blocks you don't want to paint all sides one by one because it'll take you way too much time even if it's just a um, individual blocks like this let's say you want to have a small little wall here painting these individual just means it takes a lot more time but this way you can paint all sides really really convenient there's also of course still the texture picker and there's a copy block what is copy block so what i normally do um and let me go over here if you have let's say i have some our concrete blocks let me get these ones here they look like this of course, when I build my bases, so if you've seen my videos, I'm actually placing down blocks that are already painted. And it's the pick block functionality. So what you do is that you simply paint it the way you want it. Let's say I want to have red on, oh, not all sides, please. Let's uh, do that. Red on, no, not paint. Let's do it just a normal, like that. I want to have red on these sides, and then I want to have rust black here. And then I want to have metal white on top. Now, let's say I want to make a base out of this. I hold R while looking at it and I do copy block. And you see down here, if you have space in your hotbar, you have to have space, otherwise it doesn't work. I actually have a new block. And now all the blocks that I have are now this one. And if I do the same thing here, I look here, I do R, copy block. I get more blocks of this one and this one will be this one. And that's really, really useful for building a lot of big things because you can paint one block or two blocks, the general colors that you want to have your build, you pick block and you just go on and build without having to repaint everything afterwards. And that actually saves me tons of time when I'm making these spaces because I just want to have some basic colors anyway. I don't necessarily want to paint it once more after I've built everything because that'll just take another hour. So this is really useful. Of course, it's only in the creative mode if you're not in creative sorry that doesn't work there's also further one that is replace paint however it only works when you're do dealing with prefabs and these are no prefabs but allows you to basically change from one texture to another texture of all the blocks inside that one i'm not going to show that one because i never used it and i'm not in a prefab right now it doesn't work unless you are in a prefab so it's a little bit hard to show out here but now you know all you need to do about painting, both in survival and creative mode, so go out there and paint your bases, paint your horde base, paint your home, make it look nice and pretty. It's not gonna make it more durable, stand up against the zombies, but at least you'll be living a little bit more style and a little bit less squalor. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.